What an exciting time. You have come up with an idea for a new app. It's called Health Inspirations. And it's meant to give various hints every day to the user on how can he improve his health based on an initial set of questions and answers he provides. You are overwhelmingly excited and want to get into it right away. As you sit at your desk, you open your notepad and start. You do it in a standard way by listing ideas one by one, as most likely everybody else would. After about five, you get stuck though. You have a tough time to master anything new and move your thinking forward. You look back at half of the page of text and try to find some missing pieces, some correlation, but to no avail. Your frustration grows as you are stuck in the same circle of thoughts over and over again. And this was supposed to be fun. Now, let's take a glimpse at how it looks like to design or analyze with the usage of standard ways like lists and tables. If we look at our friend while he is trying to list his ideas, we could possibly see something like this. If we were to go the tabular route, we could potentially something to the taste of so the space. Those millions that are mine. it seems to be very close for expansion. If we were to go on and finish the job this way, it is highly unlikely that it would reach the limits of its potential. We would get lost in the most apparent observations and that's it probably. Now let's take a look at how things should be done. Now, what do you instantly relate to more and makes you understand the concept far easier? Is it still the text-based stuff? If some of you thought that the mind map is some sort of a revolutionary concept, that enhances the creative process, then think again. The roots of mind maps can be tracked down tens of thousands of years ago, going as far back as the Stone Age when people tried to express themselves or tried to explain something they saw in the wild. There was no rich language like we have today and they would carve outlines of animals such as deer, horse, or wolf. The civilizations progressed and cultures like these in ancient Egypt started to come up with some sort of structured vocabulary. The hieroglyphs were solely based on pictures and shapes. On top of that, the meaning of some of the pictures was not to be transcribed directly, but more by the sound of the object in the picture. This added another layer to the value of the non-verbal part of that amazing and innovative language. Centuries later, great inventors like Leonardo da Vinci expressed their ideas mostly based on images, symbols and connections between them. The words were also there, but they were the final detailed summary which originated from the visuals themselves. And the visuals, not abstract texts, are what triggers our imagination the most when we look at the work in modern times.
The central point and the first thing we do every time is the main concept of the problem you're trying to solve. I'm quite sure you can name it somehow. That's great. But putting the name in the center is like placing an iron shield on your torso before a race. Yes, you will finish that race at some point, but it is simply not a good idea and it will slow you down severely. Once you come up with an image that embodies your pickle, draw it straight away on a piece of paper or ideally a blackboard. Now, do not rest on your laurels. Think for a moment how could you make it better, that is, more expressive, more funny, more in your eyes. Which images below brings more cool ideas to you? At this point, your brain's neurons are all over the place and are just screaming to put them into use. That is, to create and to connect. Why you keep stealing all my ideas, man? Um, because we have the same frame of mind? That's it. I'm suing you. Once we lay the ground of the central image, it is time to come up with some real ideas. Now, we start by drawing chunky branches stemming out from the center. Now, we should not try to stem too many of them as we would simply model the space we have and make it hard for ourselves to have a clear picture. If we are confident though that we need more, then possibly it is the right time to think about splitting the core problem into smaller ones and start mind mapping them one by one instead. Now, the critical thing is to make these branches colorful. If we go black and white, then we are handicapping ourselves again during that race. We will not trigger all the potential of our imagination if the colors are not there. This is a very crucial ingredient. You may ask, aren't we playing kindergarten here? Yes, we are. Yeah, that is the point. When we were young, we were most creative and we want to recreate that recklessness in our minds. Put this piece over there. Don't tell me how to put together my goddamn Lego. Yeah. Do you have another set, bro? The idea comes to life from central image to branches. We need to express those ideas in one word if possible. Now, this is crucial. If we start writing essays on our branches, we will get stuck for sure. It's a lot easier and more obvious to create new branches from single words than from sentences or statements. This is simply how our brain works. The next step is to add a drawing or a sketch to these main branches. This strengthens the idea and embodies it making further branches even more effortless to create. We must keep in mind though that these branch images should not stand out when compared to the central image. It is the one that should draw attention at first glance. I know that now you are warmed up and ready to try out this amazing technique. 
But before we start sketching and bringing our ideas to life, we have to take care of two technical factors. That is your position and the amount of space. Now, this is really important. Standing position will always be superior to a sitting position. When we stand, we can move around and in general are not so tangled up as in the sitting position. I know it is hard to do that in the horrible open spaces most of us work in, but if we try, we might find a way. The second factor is the amount of space we have to radiate our ideas. If we start on a small A5 sheet of paper, we'll end up with a small set of ideas. When we start on the biggest white border is, the ideas will keep growing and growing. So the choice is yours. You can either choose to sit at your desk upon a small sheet of paper, crumpling your creative process, or stand up, grab some chalk, breathe deeply, and kill that blackboard with some mind-blowing ideas. A mind map can be used to tackle literally any problem. One of them is getting stuck at some point or starting out your first TDD cycle. Following the procedure, you have to start with a failing test or a set of failing tests. Sometimes it just flows and the test cases just come out of nowhere and fit right in. Sometimes though, we get stuck. You sit down with a bunch of tangled thoughts and can't really come up with anything that makes any sense. This is where mind mapping comes into rescue. Get up from your boring desk, find the biggest whiteboard available, get a bunch of colorful chalk pens and get into it. I am sure after a short session, you'll come up with at least one test that will let you move forward. And that is sometimes enough to cast that TDD zone and just flow from that point on. Today we have covered one of the coolest and probably the most powerful tool when it comes to bringing your design and analysis to the next level. How amazing is that you can go back to your school days, become a kid again for a couple of hours and produce something that blows your boss's mind out of the building? He will love your ideas from that point on and will wait for any new ones coming from you. And all you had to do is to grab a bunch of chalk, prepare a blackboard, put on that cowboy hat that was your favorite when you were 10 years old, and start drawing, envisioning, drawing more, and finally creating something truly exceptional. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I hope it has added a few ideas to your software craftsmanship toolkit. If you want to gain more knowledge when it comes to combining software craftsmanship techniques with automated testing, then please go ahead and check my website. Also, if you found the content to be of value, then don't forget to click the subscribe button. And remember, programming is supposed to be a creative, fun and fulfilling experience. All you software artists out there I'm looking forward to seeing you again on our next episode.